This past October, Capture One Mobile 2.6.0 was released with new masks and layers. And in this video, we're going to be running through the advantages and disadvantages of its implementation. And at the end of the video, I'll answer the question, is Capture One now a better mobile RAW editor than Photomator? To understand the benefits of the new update, let's edit this photo. The rock is a bit too underexposed. Let's use the shadow adjustment to balance the tones. As you can see, while Capture One is doing a great job of revealing details with the same quality as its powerful desktop app, the adjustment is also affecting the water, which is not what we want. Thankfully, with the new masking, this problem can now be fixed. I'll tap the Layers button. I'll tap the Add button. I'll choose Linear Gradient. As you can see, a new layer is created. I'll position the center line of the gradient tool at around the base of the rock. I'll brighten the shadows. And there you go. As you can see, the adjustment is now limited to just the rock with the water excluded. A more pleasing result. While I'm at it, let's add a clarity and structure adjustment to bring out more of the rock's details. Next, I'll rename the layer. To do that, I'll click on the Options button. I'll choose Rename Layer. I'll type in the new name. Next, let's work on the sky. I'll add another linear gradient. I'll position the middle line of the gradient to around the top of the rock formation. I'll reduce the highlights. I'll add some clarity to bring out details in the clouds. I'll use the HSL tool to darken the blue hues in the sky. And there you go. Here is the before and the after. A pretty nice result, thanks to the new masking tools. Let's move on to another example. I'll start off by brightening the underexposed foreground with a global shadows adjustment. A pretty good result. However, the lady is still looking underexposed. Let's make her stand out a bit more. Once again, with the new masking, this is now possible. I'll tap layers. I'll add a brush mask. I'll use my Apple Pencil to make a precise selection of the subject via brushing. And there you go, another quality edit. So as you can see from the examples, these masking tools do work well and enhance Capture One Mobile's editing prowess. But are there any disadvantages? Well, yes, unfortunately, this is the first iteration with masking, and there are some disadvantages and unfortunate implementation choices. Aside from the obvious that this initial update doesn't include essential masking tools like AI Subject, AI Sky, or Range Masking, Capture One's masking workflow is also less intuitive than competitors like Photomator. For example, to refine a radial or gradient mask requires you to rasterize a mask, which means you will lose access to the gradient since rasterization will convert the entire mask to a brush mask. In Photomator, no such step is required. Also, Capture One's brush masking process is not the most intuitive its workflow requires the tapping of the Add or Subtract button each time you lift the Apple Pencil or your finger to make a new stroke. So if you lift your pencil or finger 10 times to completely mask an area, you would equivalently have to press the Add Subtract button 10 times as well. An incredibly tiresome workflow. Finally, Capture One's implementation does not allow for interoperability between its gradient tools. It is not possible to add to or subtract from a linear gradient mask with its radial gradient mask 
and vice versa. Only a brush can be used to refine a mask created by its gradient tools. A missed opportunity in my view since interoperability is one of the nice characteristics of Photomator's and Lightroom's implementation. Now just to contrast, let's take a look at how Photomator does its masking. With Photomator, I can start off creating a mask with a linear gradient mask, refine the mask with a radial gradient mask, and finish it off with a brush mask. No rasterization, unnecessary button taps, nor annoying pop-ups in the process. So in conclusion, which one is the better mobile raw editor, Capture One Mobile or Photomator? The answer is, it depends. If you are satisfied editing with just global adjustment tools, Capture One Mobile will give the better image quality and better global adjustment performance. However, if local adjustments are a necessity, then Photomator with its more sophisticated masking tools, more intuitive UI, and faster performance would be my pick. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know what you think of Capture One Mobile 2.6.0. Are you going to be editing with it? Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.